what, what the mate is talking about. How are you with the ladies? You know, like, did you have time for girls at that time? Or did you, you know? Well, well, at that time, I, I, was, I was engaged. I was engaged to Donna. You know, everybody then, here, Donna on, on, on the guy record. Yo, Teddy, meet Donna. Donna, meet Teddy okay. on one of our records. I was with Donna, and I was solely with Donna at the time. And then when my managers, you know, started taking us different places, then I started meeting girls, and, you know, I was in the wrong setting. And right. then um, he kind of took me out of that setting and kept me in the studio. But I realized when I was in the studio, I couldn't really make a, like, a dope record unless I had a girl in the studio. Huh. And it wasn't really sexual. It's just like, yo, I needed eye candy because that's how I made my records. It's Girl, like, that's how they came out so beautiful. Because <laughs> it, was, it was that around me, but I didn't, my, my manager, he kept me loyal to Donna. Right. Like he even, like when I ventured off at one time and, you know, my friend still today, you know, she, she's a forgiving child of God, but I have to say this. I had almost my first child with her. Mm -hmm. And Jean Griffin made her get an abortion. Wow. And um, that's in my film as well, because still today, we are we're best friends. We're best friends. And, you know, she forgave me because she really, like, she put it all on me. Mm -hmm. But he was the one, you know, he gave her a bag of money and said, here. You got to get rid of this baby. She was like, "I'm not getting rid of this baby." He said, "You got to get rid of this baby. I'm, I'm, I'm just advising you. You know, you, you want to get rid of him." Wow. And uh, that was that wasn't a threat. You know, he said, "This is not a threat. This is a promise." You know, I don't want my son to have babies out of wed. He's about to get married. And that's how he treated it, you know? So I went, and this is the first time I ever said this. Mm -hmm. This is you, the first person I'm saying this to, because you was like, you know, when you asked that question, how was I with the girls, the ladies, you know, he kept me from them, but he always brought them around as eye candy. Uh. So that I can make the music because, you know, I, I we used to show off, you know, that was the show off for me. I was able to show off and I had, you know, really true people around me that loved the music, loved what I was doing. And the proof was when it came out, it became a hit. Mm -hmm. So that that's how I was with the ladies. And, you know, sometime I ventured off and, but I didn't go too far, you know? So I wasn't really, how you say, uh, influenced by the ladies and, you know, sex or drugs, because I never did it. Right. I never did drugs. I never drank. And that's what you know what I'm saying? That's what, that's what got you looking so young after all of this. Uh, you too. Look at you. Right. Now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mod moderation, man. When is the film coming out? It's going to be 2021. We're already developing. Um, we're figuring out who are going to be all of the directors because this is a series. It's just like you got to have all the different directors who's going to direct so how many Netflix, films. It's Netflix. Um, no, we're working it out now. We're talking back and forth to a few people, and 50 Cent is one of them because he, he, he knows the story. And, you know, um, my brother broke, you know, kind of brought it to him. So hopefully we'll, we'll get in and sit down with him. But we've been developing it on our own as far as the ground, doing the groundwork. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we, we think it's going to be about at least two se seasons. Right. Oh, yeah, because cool. you can't put 40 years of uh history in two hours or or once one season it's a lot yeah you've done a lot bro i'm, I'm just sitting there i'm like the whole time I'm talking to you i'm just songs keep popping up in my head right you're just popping up in my head just all these 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 songs that you've made how did you learn to play and and what how many instruments do you play also well i don't play a lot of instruments i just know how to play a lot of instruments. Okay. So when I say play a lot of instruments, meaning master, I master the computer. 
and I mastered the keyboards. Okay. But as far as the other instruments, I dabble to get my songs done. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if I can't find a guitar player, trust me, I'll break that thing all the way down to one string and play that. I'll play that. Shit. How did but you make that for the piano? Um, I taught myself, and then my father bought me um a book by um Thurman. I think it's Thurman Thomas. Um. And and I I learned everything I needed to learn from that book to actually start making my own music. Mm-hmm. You know, and he bought it. He bought it for me early. You know, like when I was young and 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 old enough to actually know how to finger my chords and different things like that. And then I had an ear along with it. You know, that's the one thing is I knew what music should sound like because I grew up in it. So did you have a piano or a keyboard first? I had a keyboard, you know, I had the little Casio. Okay, so you got the keyboard, you got the Casio. <laughs> and who are you gunning for? Because when I'm on the stage doing my rookie stuff, I'm thinking about certain artists that are out there that I want to be side by side with, you know, that I want to knock off. Who are you gunning for at this time? Who's out there that's doing it on a production level? that you want to do it on, and you're saying, I want to be like this guy. Well, then it was so many things I wanted to do with music. I wanted to be a, a singer, mm-hmm. but I said, no, I'm not good in that. Let me pull back. But I was also pushed into being a singer by my mother and Jean, because right. they were like, listen, you need to be visually seen in order for them to know who the producers are. So before me, you didn't really know who the producers were. Right. You didn't know who Quincy Jones was until I came out and people started saying names on the records. I'm the first guy that had a name on the record. So with that being said, my I was gunning to work with a uh, Michael Jackson, uh, uh, who else? Uh, Prince, but as a producer, Quincy Jones was the person that, cause I was the kid that read the, the credits when he did Sanford and Son, I waited for the credits to see who did it. I didn't was find out he had done Sanford and Son until like maybe two years ago. <laughs> I knew this as a kid, man. Because yeah. I was I was looking like he did Welcome Back Carter. Yeah. Yeah. Bonnie Miller. I found that out at the same time. Yo, let me tell you something. He did uh Frank Sinatra, uh, Count Basie, I think, Duke Ellington, uh, who else? Shoot, he did, I think, Mahalia Jackson. He did a lot of people. Right. He worked with a lot of people, but the, the most that stood out for people was Michael Jackson because yeah. when he went into that mode, and then The Wiz, come on. Yeah. Yeah. The Wiz. That music was so grand. You can't make, it's like, you can't make that music again. Yeah. Unless you go back to how he did it. He had the real string players. So I studied that. I studied what he did because my godfather was his composer. Benjamin wow. Wright. Wow. Look up that name and you'll see that name side by side. What's that? What's the name? Benjamin Wright. Benjamin Wright is the guy who's responsible for the string line on Don't Stop Till You Get Enough and Quincy Jones will tell you. Everybody knows that line. Yeah. That's my godfather. What the ladies talking about?